Now, what if I wanted something else? So what if I really wanted just a pod? I don't want all this replica set and deployment and etc. I give me just one pod and that's it. I can. Um, and one way to do that is to use kubectl run dash dash restart equal never. So when I do that, then kubectl understands, oh, okay, you, you don't need me to restart the pods if something bad happens. So I don't need to create a replica set. I can create just a stray pod. So if I use kubectl run dash dash restart never, um, kubectl with generate a YAML specification, but instead of generating a specification for a deployment, it will generate a specification for a pod. Now, if I use kubectl run dash dash restart on failure, that means um, only restart that container uh, if something bad happens. But if it goes to completion, then just let it be like that. In that case, this this is basically a batch job. It's something that you, you want it to run. Um, if it runs successfully, you don't want to restart it. However, if there is a problem, then you want to restart it because you want to make sure that it runs successfully to completion. So if I use kubectl run dash dash restart on failure, then instead of generating a YAML for a pod or a deployment, it's generating the YAML for a job. Likewise, I can use kubectl run dash dash schedule, and then I can give an argument that looks like a, a cron tab, and it's going to create a cron job, so something that executes on regular intervals. Um, so this is kind of convenient, but that's also a lot of magic, because basically um, you, you have to kind of know and, and guess, oh, it's kubectl run, but that specific combination of flags means that it's going to create a job or a deployment or a pod. So if you, if you read some scripts using kubectl run, um, it's, it's going to, it, it could be fairly complex to figure out exactly what's going on. At some point, it was decided that this was bad. It was better to be explicit. And so, um, instead of using kubectl run to invite people to use kubectl create. If you want a deployment, you're going to use kubectl create deployment. If you want a job, then you say kubectl create job, etc., uh, etc. Et and eventually, kubectl run would be used only for uh, one-shot pods, so that you just want to run like a single command. You don't want that to be restarted or scaled or anything. That's why we had this um, deprecation warning earlier, uh, selling like, oh, warning, kubectl run is deprecated, etc., etc., because eventually kubectl run will go away. Um, I still wanted to use kubectl run for, for the first interaction, uh, because it's it's way easier, but eventually we will kind of uh, graduate away from from kubectl run and use the other commands instead. So to recap, how can we create resources? First one, the, the easiest is kubectl run. That's super easy to get started, and we can create a, a bunch of different things if we pass the right combination of flags. Then there is kubectl create, which is more explicit. However, it, it lacks a few features. For instance, if I want to create a cron job, I, I can't do that with kubectl create at the moment. And finally, there is kubectl create dash f or kubectl uh, apply dash f, where we pass a YAML file containing an arbitrary specification. And this is the kind of uh, the universal way to create anything. As long as I can write the YAML for it, then I can push that YAML to the API server, and the API server will create the corresponding resources. And eventually, uh, that's what we will mostly use. Except I didn't want to immediately throw like 50 lines of YAML at you because that's not the most, uh, uh, that's not the easiest way to, to get started, but eventually that's what we will use.